yeah, so I wanted to talk with you two about this IQ Allies program that, that you're involved in. Um, uh, so we've got uh, Chris Mullen and Barry Holtzlander, who are allies. And uh, I just wanted to ask you two uh, about, a bit about the program. So if you were to describe, you know, what is this IQ Allies program and how did it come about? Um, Barry, what, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, the program itself came about by, uh, well, not any of the allies. It was another group of people who felt that there was a need for IQ folks to be able to talk to somebody somewhere between just talking to your friends and talking to a professional. And so it's very much a peer oriented kind of thing. Uh, you're not, when you're interacting with an ally, you're not interacting with a counselor or a therapist. You're interacting with someone who hopefully is a friend or at least friendly if you've never really met before, but it's, it's an opportunity for you to talk about what's going on in your world without feeling the pressure of being somebody to your friends or being or demonstrating that you need therapy or whatever else it might be. So it's somewhere in between those two. What, um, what kind of, uh, what are your sense, what's your sense of the program, Chris, and you know, why it came about, what it needs it's uh, addressing? Yeah, I just think that um, I know from previous experience that I had in, in people ops, there was a lot of need that people had with just having somebody to, to talk to. Uh, there's many cases that, that people will just, you know, they'll be sitting at their computer and can't get their mind off something until they can talk to somebody about it. Um, and they just need somebody to just listen to them. So all it takes is you know, 10 minutes to just kind of vent almost uh, and people can get their focus back to, to their jobs. But, you know, life happens and sometimes you just need an output. Um, yeah. If you were to think about how, uh, how would a person recognize that they might want to get in touch with an ally, Chris? Um, yeah, there's those cases. If you're just, if you're just stuck at your computer and something's on your mind, it really doesn't matter what it is. Um, there's that, if there's something bothering you, if you're having trouble, uh, sleeping and, and just need somebody to, to listen. But most importantly, if you're unsure of where, where resources are, um, like Barry said, we are not professionals. We're basically just people that are good listeners, uh, and, uh, can help direct people to, the proper uh, resources that can really get them help uh, with whatever it is that's bothering them. Yeah, I think that's a good distinction that you're making there. Is uh, it's about having somebody to, to just explore a, a thought or an idea with, and then try to figure out what next steps what next steps might be, right? Yep. Yeah. Barry, any thoughts on that? Well, one of the ways you might know that you need or that you could you'd find value in this process mm -hmm. is if you've talked to your, you know, your partner or you know, your kids or your friends or whatever it is. And it just, and you, and you think you need more. You're, you know. you're not sure at this point, whether you need to talk to a professional, if it's about something you know, really significant, mm -hmm. but you know, hopefully you've got at least those people. And for some, you're moved here. It's hard to get a hold of people, whatever it might be. Maybe you don't have anybody to talk to. Yeah. So if you're, if you're in either of those situations, you know, you've talked it over with your partner and you're, it's still nagging at you maybe talking to one of us would, would be enough. And if it turns out it isn't, one of the things that we, I mean, hopefully we listen well and interact with you well, but we've been given a lot of uh, exposure to the resources that are there that we can maybe help you decide you might need more. What are they? Are, where can you go? How can we help you with that? So we're not just going to leave you hanging going, oh, well, I guess we can't help you. It's, right. it's a bit more than us. Have you considered this or have you considered that? Um, if you were to think about uh, if there's such a thing as a typical interaction uh, with somebody uh, seeking guidance, what do these uh, interactions look like? Hmm. I don't know if I've come to a typical one. Uh, yeah. Every one of them is so unique that uh, yeah. uh, dependent on what the needs are. I, I guess for me, uh, a lot of it has been just honestly just sitting there and listening to people and I'd say 80% of the time they solve their own problem. Um, yeah. It's just mm. them needing to talk it out. Um, yeah. And, uh, and they find the solution in most cases, but um, yeah, they just need a, a place to, to let yeah. it out. Oh, that's fascinating. Barry, any thoughts? I, on that? If I was going to say, 
if there was something typical and yeah, I just haven't had enough for it to there to be sort of huge themes or anything. It's somebody says something along the lines of, I just don't know what to do about this, whatever it is, yeah. whether it's an interaction with a coworker or something at home, because allyship isn't just about work stuff. It's about you and whatever it is that you, you were going through. Right, and it's been, right. you know, I, I had this talk and they said this and I don't know why they said this. And then it made me mad and I don't know what to do. And, at least a couple of times it's been, well, just tell me about it. And as they've talked about, as like Chris says, as they've talked about, they said, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe I would react or something. And that's all it took. And it all, in those cases, it started with, I'm not sure what to do next, or I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh, that's really powerful. You know, you think about the effect of a, like psychological safety, which is to say you have the, the confidence to share your ideas or your thoughts, uh, just creating that space for people to, uh, at work realize, oh, there's somebody I can talk to uh, about something that, you know, may not necessarily be about work, but may be, but it's definitely affecting work. And that's one of the things that I think is really powerful about this thing is just the honesty or the sincerity with which the, 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 uh, the program is trying to meet people where they need uh, to be met. It's just so uh, generous isn't the right word, but it's just, it's so thoughtful. And I think the sincerity yeah. of it really touches me. I think you nailed it on the head there, Clayton, with the psychological safety. That That is something yeah. that people have said has been uh, a need that they have. And mm. uh, and uh, I think this definitely opens that up for a lot of people. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I think you hit it perfectly right there. What about, um, if you think about uh, the outcomes uh, that occur as a result of these uh, conversations that you might have with people. What kind of, uh, what are you looking for as a, as you interact with people as an ally? What kind of, where are you trying to get them at a, through a conversation? Barry? Just a, yeah, go ahead, Barry. Oh, I, I've, I've thought about that a lot because it's important that, that I know where we're, we're hoping to end up because, and realize that what I, what I want them to finish with or what I want them to leave with is a sense that they've actually been heard, that someone listened to them, didn't listen to them just to solve a problem, wasn't listening, wasn't waiting for a time to jump in and show how much we know or how, or whatever. But I want people to have this feeling, first of all, that they've been heard and that they then know where to go next if they need to go somewhere and that they feel comfortable with the closure they've got if they've got there. Hmm. And it's not so much a, do you, do you feel you have closure? I mean, we're not asking those kind of questions, but you can tell <laughs> when somebody yeah. has, has sort of talked through something and come to this resolution, whatever it might be. And so hmm. I don't want people to leave feeling as bad or heaven forbid worse than when we started. I want them to, to have some sense that, that something's moving forward, that they're developing some momentum, that, that things have the potential to be better whether it's just because mm. they've talked about it or now they know that uh, the employee assistance program exists and they've got a number for it, or they know that yeah. they've, mm. that there are help, there's help for whatever it is that's been bugging them. Yeah. I think that is probably the one thing that I find that I need to work on the most is knowing that point where they feel they've been heard and it's time that you can kind of move on to, you know, close a meeting or, or whichever. But I know there's been a couple of cases where, you know, I've gone back or had reoccurring meetings with people and you just, when you leave and you're just like, did they like, were they ready to move on with that, you know, from mm. that meeting? Um, and uh, I think I've just got to work. That's something that <laughs> I need to work on is just ask those questions a little more and uh, make sure they're ready to move on. Maybe. Um, yeah. It's just Any, sometimes hard to tell when it's just quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any misperceptions about the program that people may have that um, you think about, uh, Chris? Oh, I just think that, yeah, we're, we're not, you know, um, we've got lots of experience maybe uh, in these conversations, but none of us are, well, Barry might be, but uh, none of us are really like professionals or trained properly in this we've, we've taken courses we've got training we've got you know more insight to help people um than the average person but mm -hmm. it, by no means are we a replacement for professionals that can really help 
yeah. it, like we said earlier, we are good listeners and, and we have uh, knowledge of resources that are out there. And, and uh, if you are really needing that extra yeah. level, we can help you get to that, but we aren't that. Yeah. yeah you're a co conduit, a connector to things. And yeah. like you say, a lot of times people resolve their own uh, next to next steps. Um, so on their own. Yeah. Yeah. Anything Barry or? Well, it, I think that, I think Chris covered it, covered it quite well. Cause that's exactly what we, we want people to realize that we can provide next steps, but we aren't very often the next step. Sometimes the listening is, is enough and that's terrific. But if you need anything more than, than, a, than someone to listen to you in a, in an open, non-judgmental way, because you know we we have no agenda in any of these conversations. They are entirely confidential. We don't report them anywhere. We don't tell anybody at IQ. We've signed a document that we went over with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that you are safe, because that's what we want to do. We want to create that sense of safety. But we're not we're not going to be the ones who who work with you on a on a significant issue for a long period of time we're there to listen and then help you to the next step mm. whether it's whether it's the employee assistance program or something else that we know about that would yeah. fit whatever you need um how about people uh getting in touch with allies uh, how do they learn about getting in touch with uh, you folks i think for me it's been a lot of times it's been word of mouth or or mm. leads um you know leads have directed them to right. us um uh, you know, after one-on-one -on -one conversations and things like that, um, if the lead's not fully comfortable with the direction that it's going, then they can kind of uh, pass that reference, kind of our reference onto them, I guess. Oh, I see. Um, but uh, so that has happened a, a couple times. And then, yeah, I think just word of mouth. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm getting yelled at from outside. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, yeah, word of mouth or, yeah. or finding, like, we've done a good job of making sure that people see see us through Slack and emails and, and different things as well. So yeah. there's those options as well. But uh, I think word of mouth and especially the leads have been a really key part for yeah. the ones that I've been in anyway. So The wiki has a nice bit of information on it too. I know they've been diligently updating that, uh, yeah. keeping that up to date. So I, I've noticed that is a nice resource as well. Um, Barry, how do people actually end up typically getting in touch with you? It's a Slack thing, um, phone call, how do they set it up? What do it's, they do? it's mostly been Slack. Uh, and then before this whole pandemic nonsense, uh, a couple of face to face things. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that an ally does is we've always, I mean, we're, we, we, we have a, a, a full-time role at IQ already, but at the same time in just casual conversation, that sort of thing, we're, we're alert to the possibility that maybe there, maybe there's more. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's only happened once, but it was a significant interaction with somebody and I think it was quite helpful to them. Uh, but other than that, it's been people reaching out to us through Slack because they've heard about the program either from one of their coworkers and at least a couple of times a coworker has come to come to me and said, uh, this person has something I think you might be able to help. And so it's an opportunity for, for IQers who see someone in, in, in need, we'll just leave it at that, whether it's a crisis or not, doesn't matter, in need, and they don't feel equipped to do anything, that they have a next step also, which can be wow. really helpful for them and for the person. I mean, it, it might not work, but it's always worth a try. If you, if you see one of your coworkers who's really struggling with something and you think an ally might be able to help, mm -hmm. talk to an ally. If we know we can't, we'll, we'll let you know. We'll be honest right. with you there, but we're... We're willing to we're willing to take that risk of of touching base with somebody and saying, "Hey, how are you doing? I've heard wow. this or whatever the introduction seems to be." That really hits me right in the feels. Uh, knowing I never thought about that application of a colleague recognizing that a colleague might need something. I don't know why I never thought of that, but when you said it, boy, it really hit me. Um, really valuable. Of like, IQers are compassionate people, and when you see a colleague having a difficult time <clears throat> to have an additional outlet to resolve that to help them is it's just an additional thing i know it's not the only thing but wow that never hit me before thanks for bringing that up well it's really important because not everybody feels equipped to do that you want to help no. but if you don't know how 
and right. you're afraid you just might make it worse, and <laughs> you probably won't, but if you're afraid of that, let us try and we'll make it worse and you'll be off the hook. Right. Well, <laughs> and you know, that colleague compassionately probably is, is engaged with that person and found that it's not helping. It's not resolving next issues. Yeah. It's not moving towards a, a, you know, a reasonable outcome for whatever reason. And to have another way to, um, to, to pursue another avenue is such a wonderful thing. Um, I just want to close out the conversation with um, just if there's anything that you want people to more clearly understand as we wrap up the conversation today, just if there's anything we missed that you want to touch on, other than the fact that there, there's not just you two as allies. Uh, Nicole uh, Cornets is also an ally. The program is a Regina-based program. That's uh, something to know. Uh, it is being expanded to other offices uh, shortly. Um, and not everybody has a long flowing beard. So Nicole <laughs> is another ally. So uh, anyway, anything uh, on your minds that you just want to mention that you think would be useful for people or should we just wrap that up? Well, I'd really like people to know that it's a no risk chance. Mm. If you, if you touch base with an ally and say, I'd like to talk about this, we're never going to say, well, that was trivial. <laughs> you may say that you may realize that talking about it, that it didn't need whatever, whatever, then that's fine. That's okay. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not keeping track of anybody by name. Right. We're not, we're not talking about you behind your back. We're not doing any of those things. We are specifically forbidden to, to yep. keep track of, of those kinds of personal details uh, as it relates to, to the rest of the IQ family or anywhere else. Like we just, they, what you say to us stays with between us period. So yeah. you don't have to worry about that. Well, unless you're going to hurt yourself, you know, the usual thing, what you say yes. will never come from us. Mm -hmm. We may help you. We may ask you to consider talking to somebody if it's necessary, but we won't do that. So it's always worth a try. And if you, and if you reach out to me on Slack and I'm unavailable or we do connect and then we don't connect, I just don't seem to get it. There's always Chris, there's always Nicole. We have other options and we're, before we get things expanded to the other offices, if you're really stuck and you're from another office, it's okay to drop us a line. Really, it is. You're all part of the family, and we'd love to be helpful if we can. Yeah, I think um, uh, you brought up a good point. The confidentiality is actually written into an agreement that uh, the allies have signed at risk of termination, right? Is this, this is, mm -hmm. yeah, the company is really taking this. Um, um, Seriously, and it's not a threat to the allies. It's just a, yeah, I remember reading that and I thought, oh, okay, this is very important. And the company is seeing it as very important and the allies are also seeing it as important. So I thought that was something. Anyway, anything you want to close with, Chris? No, I think Barry, the only thing I really wanted to touch base on was, especially right now, while things aren't opening up in the other offices quite yet, um, to make sure that feel free that you can reach out to us um and i mean going forward too if there's if you've created a, a friendship or, or a bond with any of us uh i mean we're never going to turn you down that's for sure so um yeah it's open to anybody yeah i guess in this modern world geography is a little bit obliterated uh nobody's face to face anymore the the relationships are valuable so you may have a personal relationship with somebody in your office that you feel more comfortable with but uh, that's a good point. Uh, geography isn't an issue. People can reach out to any ally that they want and uh, the uh, and, and have a conversation with somebody that's meaningful. So, if there is one thing I'd like to sorry, this just struck me uh, on the wiki. We have little micro bios of us. So if you mm -hmm. if you don't have a con previous connection with any of the three of us, take a look there and see if something jumps out. Like if you're thinking I'd like to talk to an ally, but I don't know which one, you can flip a coin or you can go there. Or you can go there and then flip a coin. It doesn't really matter. But it gives you some idea of what we're like. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Uh, wow, that was really wonderful. I really appreciate you guys, uh, you two, uh, uh, having a chat with me today and try to give us uh, some insight into the Ally program. And uh, looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. So thanks very much. Yeah, Thank you. Yep. Thanks.